The church need to wake up, my friends. The church need to wake up and it's time. It's time for the church to take its rightful position to take the lead of this nation. Yes. There is hope for everyone in this troubled world, knowing there's no truth other than the Word of God. Do you think it's important to pray for our enemies? Do you know and believe that the Word of God is not just for knowledge, but for transformation? Hi, and welcome to this episode of Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg, a podcast of the Joshua Fund, a ministry dedicated to blessing Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus. I'm Carl Muller, Executive Director of the Joshua Fund, and today we have a very special episode about how a person named Tas Sada encountered God's love and was forever transformed by it. Here's today's episode. I'm pretty sure the enemy didn't want you to hear me today, but he's not going to win. I got the power, <laughs> but that is in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. I really love you, man, and I appreciate you so much. And yes, if I was still living in my old life, it would not be a fun game for you to be in the same room with me. But I praise Jesus Christ that gave me the, the new life to be able to stand with you here and take a stand for the truth, for the Word of God. Hallelujah. In 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, 12, it says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength to do His work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve Him. Even though I used to blaspheme the name of Christ, in my insolence, I persecuted his people. But God had mercy on me because I did it all in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that come from Christ Jesus. And I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to stand here today and give him all the honor and the glory. You know, I was sitting here, praise the Lord. I was sitting back there and I was listening to the general speaking. And I'm sitting there and I'm shaking my head, agreeing with every word he said. Friends, if we don't take seriously what the general spoke about today, America in 10 to 15 years from now will not be the same place today. The freedom that we have we are able to stand here and speak the truth and speak the word of God will be taken away from us. Wake up followers of Jesus. It is time for us to take charge and not to allow the enemy to take charge in our world today. My topic is, is there hope in this troubled world. And I tell you the truth, yes, there is hope. And that hope is in Jesus Christ himself. No one else. In my old days, I loved to run around with a machine gun called AK-47. Nowadays, I run around with my best machine gun, the Word of God. My friends, There is no other truth but this truth. The enemy wants to confuse us, wants to instill confusion in our camp. But if you stick to the Word of God and come to know it and understand it well, you'll be okay. Joel Books gives us a lot of prophecies. Read and listen very closely to what is going on today. All you have to do is watch what is going on in Israel. And then you knew the days are near. I came to America back in 1974. I don't know why I came to America. 
I have no idea why I came to America. Because I hated Americans just as much as I hated Jews. No offense. <laughs> I, I did. I'm sorry. To me, a good Jew was, used to be, a good Jew is a dead Jew. But thank God he filled my heart with so much love for the Jewish people. They were the first to pray for before my own people the day after I gave my heart to Jesus. I woke up that early in the morning and I felt the presence of the Lord so powerful in the room. I did not have power in my knees to stand up. I fell on my face. And I was thanking Allah at the time. I thought it was Allah for what he's done, this peace, this joy that I'm having in my heart that I've never experienced before. And then I hear myself praying a prayer, saying, Oh God, bless your people Israel. Oh God, gather them back to the promised land. <laughs> Literally, I put my hand on my mouth, shutting my mouth up. What am I saying? <laughs> That's the power of God, if we let him. My friends, I could not understand why I prayed for my enemy before my own people until I ran to find the word of God and realized at that moment, after I read the Bible, I read it in 45 days. I'm not a good reader, but I did. In 45 days, I came to the understanding of who this land belongs to. I came to understand I was fighting a wrong war. I came to understand that Israel is not winning these wars because of the mighty power of the IDF army. It's because we were fighting God and his plans for Israel. Yes, glory to God. You can't fight God and win. This is why I'm so urgent for us to take the message. My friend, you have 6.8 or 7 million Muslims that came to this nation. I was one of those. God brought me to the shores of America so a man by the name of Charlie Sharp would befriend me and love me for 19 years, treating me as an equal person. When I had nothing to offer him, the man is a very wealthy man. Why is he treating me like that? 19 years, not one time he shared anything about his religion or his Jesus. Until the time of God came. And he was one to lead me to the kingdom. My friends, you have many Muslims that have come to this nation. They came as immigrants and refugees. But they came to you as an opportunity to lead them to the kingdom of God. Yes. The church need to wake up, my friends. The church need to wake up and it's time. It's time for the church to take its rightful position to take the lead of this nation. Yes. Our verse for the day is taken from 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And our prayer requests today are, number one, that we pray that those in the Middle East will come to know Christ, be turned from darkness to light, and that their hearts will be flooded with God's love. And we also pray that God will raise up more men and women willing to reach out with the gospel to the unsaved in the Middle East, the U.S., and other troubled areas worldwide. In 1974, I came to the United States to get education, to better serve the cause of my people. But I found the American people to be a very kind, loving, and very generous people. I made a decision I want to live in this nation. My whole ideas, my whole thinking changed. My friends, I am proud and honored to be an American citizen today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. 
I decided I wanted to stay in America, so I asked my friends what would be the best way to stay in America. Why are you laughing there? <laughs> they told me to marry an American girl. <laughs> I thought that's easy. That's not a problem. So I went hunting for an American girl. <laughs> and I found her. And thank God for his plans. Because they were better than mine. My intentions were to marry my wife Karen, have my papers in America, and then say goodbye. But thank God she's still my wife 35 years later. Thank God for his plans. Yes. Americans, you are wonderful. Yes, you are. And I love you, and I'm glad to be one of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have to take our faith seriously, my brothers and sisters. This word of God that is given to us was not given to us just to have a Bible knowledge or a head knowledge. Bible knowledge is good, nothing wrong with it. But it's given us to give us a deep moral transformation. And if this word doesn't make it for us, does not give us a deep moral transformation to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, then this Bible is not the true word of God. In Matthew 5, the word of God says, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. It's written in red, my friends, which means it was directly from the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Which means it's a command, it's not a choice. And we have so many experiences in America where because of what's going on elsewhere in the world or because of what happened on September 11, and I stand before you today, even though it's a few years later, but I'm saying, forgive us, America, for what we have done against you, a great nation. Yes. I stand in the gap for my people, Middle Eastern people. I stand in the gap for them because they are blinded. How much more powerful would it be if Osama bin Laden or Mishal stands at this pulpit carrying his Bible instead of his machine gun? How much more powerful would that be? The power of prayer that brought me to the point where I am here today. When Charlie read to me the word of God back in 1993, telling me about Jesus being the true son of God, from John 1.1, this word has become a life. It shook me and took me over. I lost conscience. The next I know I'm on my knees with my hands lifted up, inviting the Lord Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. This word is not a dead word, my brothers and sisters. This is a living word. When it was written to me, it took me over. The next day after I was saved and I, after I prayed for my enemies, I was running to get a Bible, and then I found my son in the bathroom shaving, 18 years old boy. I stopped and I said, son, I want to share something with you. He said, what, Dad? I said, yesterday I gave my heart to Jesus. I think I've become a Christian, I said. <laughs> I didn't know exactly yet. His eyes got so big, he mouth dropped, came running over to me with shaving cream all over his face. He's hugging me and kissing me, and we are crying, and he's crying and saying, oh, Dad, I'm so happy for you. I said, I stopped to think for a minute here. Why is the boy happy for me? <laughs> I didn't raise him as a Christian. I said, son, why are you happy for me? He said, dad, three months ago I gave my heart to Jesus too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He went back to his pastor. said, what am I going to do now? If my father finds out, he's going to kill me. The pastor was so wise, he said, you go back to your father's house and you love him more than you've ever loved him before. And let God take care of the rest. 
And that church went into prayer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for three months until they made my life so miserable that I can't look better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Now, my wife, my American Catholic wife, she saw I was reading the Bible and understanding it. She got jealous. So she gave her heart to Jesus 45 days later. <laughs> and so did my daughter. So I teased my wife and said, hey, it took a Muslim to bring Catholic to the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. I hope you've enjoyed listening to that powerful testimony from Tas Sada, explaining how he encountered God's love, the transformative power of his word, the power of prayer, and the importance of praying for our enemies. If you've found something in this podcast valuable, would you please get in touch with us? Let us know who you are. Are you someone who's searching for Jesus? Here's where you can find him. Do you want to talk about something else on this show? And do you have a question that you want Joel to answer? Go to joshuafund.com and click on Contact Us. Your feedback is incredibly valuable to us as we develop this podcast. And as always, you can check out our show notes for anything you heard on the podcast that you'd like more information on. For Joel Rosenberg and the Joshua Fund Ministry Team, I'm Carl Muller. Thanks for listening to this episode of Inside the Epicenter with Joel Rosenberg. I'm Joel Rosenberg. On your left, you'll find some videos we've chosen specifically for you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.